Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. And remember this. Women and cats will do as they please. And men and dogs should relax and get used to the idea. Morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot to stand up and be proud and give us our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. And a good, good morning to you. It's going to be a fantastic day today. I hope you enjoy it. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations with a great big fall tire sale going on right now. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett, Bennett, that is without the R, Bennett Avenue in Burley, right there, sweet to, don't forget, helping you get back to being you. Wow, let's go to the phone line right now and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jerry, thank you so much for doing the pledge for us, my dear friend. Thank you. God bless. Have a great day. Thank you much. You have a great day, and may the Lord bless you and your whole audience. Uh, appreciate it, my friend. Hey, don't forget, right now it's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by KNR Rental. Hello, Roger. i got to get over and see those folks in the next couple of days. They're located at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. They're right there on the Burley Paul Highway. You couldn't miss them. No, they're easy to find. And they've got the rental of the best tools and equipment all around. They've got everything for you, all the tilling uh, uh, machines ready to rip up those gardens for the fall and uh, they've got all the compressors to blow out those sprinklers they got the excavators they got it all it's there at knr rental on the burley paul highway six seven eight three one two two and right now here's gina with the weather Looks like the sunshine and warmer temperatures are going to be sticking around for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch today. Another beautiful day in the valley, expecting sunny skies with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 5 miles an hour tonight. Nice and clear with a low of 32. Tomorrow, another beautiful day. Sunny skies, expecting a high of 34 with an overnight low of 34. As we hit Friday, sunny skies and 64. Slightly breezy. Winds out of the south at about 5 miles an hour. Nice and clear for Friday night with a low of 34. By Saturday, sunny skies and 67, close to 70. By Sunday, sunny skies and 68 is what we're expecting. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Holy moly, I love that forecast. I like the fall. I just don't like what comes after it. <laughs> Weather forecast is brought to you by KNR Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Roger and the crew over there get there early in the morning to serve you. You can give them a call too if you're not sure what you need. Six seven eight three one two two K and R Rental. Wow, we have got a lot of things to mention here this morning. It's going to be one of those busy, busy programs. And I want to remind you, thank you, Elaine Stevenson, if you're listening out there this morning. The 2018 Republican Bus Tour for the state candidates will be coming through this area on Thursday, October 25th. That's next week. And they'll be in Rupert at the E Street Deli on the east side of the square from 530 to 6 p.m. And if you want to meet those folks, 
folks, shake their hand and ask questions, I think you should. That's going to be next Thursday on the 25th. I want to remind you, too, that our dear friends over at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you know, you think of the businesses that are here today and gone tomorrow. Well, it's not like that with Ramsey's. Over six decades over 60 years of serving you for all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. The best with the best of people. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. And the number to call so they can have everything waiting for you, 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Now, there has been a lot of discussion on the phone the last couple of days in regards to next Thursday, the 25th Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant. It sounds to me like there's going to be a lot of competitiveness going on, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people in our costume contest and our mask contest. I have the prizes all finalized, and we want to say thank you to Stoats Equipment Company. Thank you, Vic, and we want to thank Jeff over at Lee's Furniture, and also my buddy Randy over at Tires West, and they really helped us with our prizes for our costume contest for Halloween. It's all going to be next Thursday at Denny's Restaurant at 1130 at 611 North Overland and Burley. You can stop in anytime all the time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, and they are the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go into our first story momentarily, but I also want to remind you that Uh, District 25 Senator, one of the great, great guys that's helped really serve the state of Idaho, Jim Patrick, urges everybody to go and vote on November 6th. We've got a lot of issues and a lot of great people that uh, you need to go vote for. So don't forget Jim Patrick. He appreciates and always says thank you for the support he's gotten from you over the many years and he's encouraging you again to really know and understand proposition one and two and go vote on november 6 paid for by jim patrick district 25 senator a really good man all right caller good morning you're on the air yes good morning Zeb. well tony you're up bright and early somebody must have tipped over the coffee pot no, I pick up uh, three dogs in the morning. Very, very early, so my daughter can get to work on time. Are you a professional dog walker? No, but I am a professional uh, body picker up. <laughs> That's more information than we needed during the breakfast hour. But go ahead, Tony. What can I do for you? Well, uh, is the Mexican government? Going to help us out uh, with this uh, armada that's heading toward our country, and uh, is uh, President Trump going to put troops on the uh, border to stop this horde of people from entering the United States and becoming uh, uh, Democratic voters eventually? I hope so. I mean, I, I, I just am so enraged this morning and some of the criticism that I've already received it just it's got to run like water off a duck's back because I absolutely do not want to see us the United States threatened and have people point their fingers at us and say we're coming in regardless of what you want no and some of these absolutely perverted and disgusting uh, stories and photos that they're using for sob stories don't buy it because most of these people coming in are young men, many of which, most of which, and as a matter of fact, one senator even came out yesterday and said, up to 95% of these people, we have no clue who they are, we have no clue what they are, and we have no clue about any diseases or whatever they might be bringing into this country. So, what President Trump said, stop them, and I hope the Mexican government does the same. Well, it seems to me that the Mexican government is uh, going right along with these people because the Mexican government may be, uh, have been paid off by the drug cartels. You just let anything 
happened to the United States that they could possibly do. Well, Tony, all I'm going to say, the proof's going to be in the pudding, and I absolutely support, and I want everybody to understand where I'm coming from, I absolutely support President Trump cutting off aid to these Central American countries if... They try to just absolutely overpower and storm through our borders illegally. I say no more money to these foreign countries. Absolutely. I'm with you. Tony, now go sit down and rest, because I know you've got to go out, and when three dogs are on a leash and they can cover three points of the compass, be in good shape and watch out. Well, I already did my duty a few minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Just once a day. So. All right. Tony, thank you okay. so much. God bless you, man. Thanks. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Caller number two, I'll be right there. Do not go away. I promise I'll be right there. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I talked to Nick, what was it, yesterday, I believe it was, and uh, we're getting the ball rolling to help me, and they can help you. All you need to do is call the number 678-1191. Why should you call? Well, maybe you're recouping from an injury or a surgery or some high school football players got all the bumps and bruises, hey, they can help. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley with the best, and I underline that word best, of physical therapists, the most professional. And, of course, they've got the only hydrotherapy pool of its kind in the area. Stop in and call. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Helping you get back to being you. Also, don't forget our dear friends over at Stoats Equipment Company. Yes, they are your John Deere dealer at 119 Overland and Burley. And Vic and the crew, I'm telling you, they have ag minutes on Tuesdays at 946. Really interesting and informative, and they are serving you. And they make your life easier. Stoats Equipment Company. Your John Deere dealer. Caller, good morning, and thank you for your patience. Good morning, Zeb. You know, I think these photos we see of these people marching along are artificial. And I'll tell you why I think so. I don't think any one of them has as much as a toothbrush in their pocket. I mean, where are these people going to sleep? How are they going to eat? And everything else. This this is an artificial thing that they're showing us. I believe it, don't you? Well, Keith, I can't say, and you can't say, because we don't know the facts, but I will say this, that when over 3,000 people are aimed at our borders with the intention of coming in, and whether we like it or not, they're just going to come in, and then we're going to support them. Your dollars and mine are going to support them. We're all ready. And this is what really takes me off. Uh, We're already supporting them in their own country by sending down aid money. And then they want to come up here, and we're going to continue sending aid down to their respective country and then pay for them to be here again? I don't like the double dipping out of my savings account and my retirement account. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely against this. Oh, absolutely. This is a tragedy. And... It's my understanding that the law says when they get to that bo- the, the port or, or where you come in, they cannot deny you entry. Well, Is that true? We have, uh, there, I, I don't believe in all that you're told in that regard. I mean, we have borders and we have laws that are not being implemented and being used. I have never in my life seen anything that is perpetrated as a falsehood about, oh, we can't stop them, they got to come in. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We have border laws and registrations and regulations that have to be maintained and adhered to. And maybe with this Trump administration, we're going to see that happen. I like the idea of cutting off aid to those countries if these people want to poke us in the eye and say we're coming in no matter what. I don't want any more of my tax dollars to be used against us in a form of blackmail. And here's how it's going. We're sending them money to help their countries grow and prosper. Evidently, they're doing a lousy job. And now these people are coming up here saying, well, we're going to come in here whether you like it or not, and we're going to spend more money trying to house, feed, clothe, and protect them. This is asinine. This is an example of our so-called nation building. 
We were sending the money to the wrong people. You got it, buddy. Hey, I got another call. Thank you, Keith. You bet. All right. Thank you much. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I got to tell everybody there is going to be an outstanding special feeder cattle sale at Producers Livestock in Jerome this Saturday, October 20th at 12 noon. This will be a sale of choice cattle only. No dairy or dairy cross cattle. Mm -mm. And for consignment information, you better call my buddy Dan Schiffler at 539-4933. I'll say it again, 539-4933. Or call Producers Office at 324-4345. Special feeder cattle sale, quality cattle sale, this Saturday, October 20th at high noon at Producers Live stock in Jerome. Caller, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. I definitely think we ought to cut off aid to these countries. I also think we ought to block anything that comes in from Mexico if they let them across. I mean everything. And any product that we send back like money, we ought to put a thousand dollar tariff on every penny that goes across that border. Jerry, I want you to give me a, and give me a short answer on this because I've got other calls. But what have you ever taken any heat or any uh, stern reaction from your friends and neighbors about your thoughts on uh, stopping and not allowing immigration? I'm fed up to the top of my forehead of people criticizing me and saying I'm a bigot and a hate monger. I am not. You've known me for over 20 years, and I will do all I can to help other people, but I'm at my wit's end of having and being forced to accept people from foreign countries that are not citizens, and it's going to cost us. Well, Zeb, I'm not going to take any heat from anybody on that because I just won't allow it. I absolutely think that country works against us. I think that country is a disgrace to the world. I think that they do things that are absolutely wrong, like teaching their people how to sneak into this country and stay here and live off our welfare system. Yes. I think that everything that goes back that way ought to be taken away. In other words, we should not be able to send a penny across that border. Not one cent anybody or anything. I'm that upset with Mexico. I I feel that they need to be stopped in their tracks where they're at. And all of our negotiations, all of our trades, everything we do with them cut off, stopped immediately. All right, Jerry, I appreciate it. i got to run, but I appreciate your call. Thank you, my dear friend, and call again. Thank you. You have a wonderful day, and may the Lord bless. All right, sir. Uh, Any politician... And I want to say this, any politician, locally, statewide, or nationally, that is going to support the inclusion of any and all numbers coming across our borders, regardless, refugees, illegal aliens, whatever, I am going to go after them on this program, and we're going to damn and denigrate what they are doing and why. It's got to stop. It has got to stop. We do not know what's happening. We do not know who is here. And when I pick up the paper or read in the news that now polio, and don't you anybody in the audience ever come up and preach to me about, oh, well, polio's dead, etc. No, it is not. And never, ever denigrate how serious it really is. Because I would know far more than you. We are seeing now where 62 cases of polio-like disease has been found and confirmed in 22 states. And 65 additional illnesses in those states are being investigated. This has got to stop for protection of us, our families, and our country. We have got to crack down and make much tighter immigrants, legal or illegal aliens coming into this country. 
Caller, bear with me. I've got to do this commercial. I'll be right with you, I promise. I want to remind you about Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, of course, offering service you can trust. And, of course, uh, they have wonderful products where they're offering up to $1,600 in rebates on qualifying equipment purchases. You better check it out today. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox at 678-0459. Of course, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 20 600 Overland Avenue in Burley, over 60 years of service to you. Also want to acknowledge our dear friends over at Sophie's Chatterbox. Every Monday we give away a dozen delicious cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox at 530 E Street in Rupert, right on the square. Delicious cookies. You answer the trivia contest, you're going to win. Sophie's Chatterbox, great bakery, fantastic restaurant in Rupert. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Have interesting conversation. Um, I'll go one step further. This uh, band of refugees that's headed for the border this time is from a particular country, but there's two or three other countries or several countries between that country and the United States that are facilitating and helping this uh, stuff to go on, and that makes them complicit in this. And in my mind, every one of them needs to face the same consequences as Honduras. Oh, there's no question. There's no question. It's not just a single entity. It's a checkerboard of hopscotch and leap over going through various countries to basically thumb their nose at us and come on into our country and then take your money and mine. I totally agree with you. I mean, there's so much complicity here, and there's so many people and countries and so-called leaders that we need to come down on. I mean, the list is almost endless. And a lot of these people are being used as pawns. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, that they're being promised things, but they're being used politically. It all comes down to money and power. There was a lady that called in yesterday on this program, sir, and she hit the nail right on the head. We are seeing our seniors in this country take a back seat or even get bumped out of the back seat and have to stand on the road because of cutbacks in various programs, cutbacks in medical uh, assistance, etc. But yet, the government, our government, and our absolutely, and I'm going to say it, stupid congressmen and senators are turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to our needs in this country and openly saying to the illegals, come on in, we'll take care of you. And this has got to stop. It absolutely does. And the politicians, excuse me, the politicians don't have a spine. They're pandering to the loudest voices in the media, and they think that they're hiding and doing what they need to do to stay in power, but this is going to swing around. Um, There's a disaster in the making, and things are going to happen, and people are going to have to confront this and look at it from a realistic point of view. Um, The demographics are changing. Um, The Republican conservative vote is getting watered down. And when they do get power, if they get power through this means, it's going to change the way a lot of things happen. Well, stop right there. Stop right there. You just said something very, very important that a lot of people gloss over. The way the numbers are increasing, it's going to change a lot of things you just said. Look at the demographics. Look at the numbers where a lot of these people, or most of the numbers, are going to go to highly uh, urbanized and numbered areas of population, be it Chicago, be it L.A., be it San Francisco, be it Tampa, Florida, whatever. And that changes the entire structure of the demographics for the Democrats and their leftist ways to vote in their party values, which I uh, use that term loosely. But you've hit the nail right on the head. That's that's the whole goal. Well, thank you. I thank you for your call. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Caller, again, you know the drill. i got to pay some bills. I'll be right with you. Do not go away. I'll be right there. Stand by. Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts, and they've got three locations. Fairly close. One in Burley. That's close. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley with Juan. Got to get him back on the air. And 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls with Eli. He's another Green Bay Packer fan like I am. And the Nampa location. They have 
have the very, very best of equipment rentals and retail equipment sales. I'm telling you, they've got everything there. And if you're not sure how to run the equipment, not to worry. They've got a big sandbox out behind the business, and they're going to help you be a pro. Stop in today and see and work with the best. Barry Equipment and Rental, Sales, Service, and Parts, Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. Holy cow, caller, stand by. I also want to remind you, and this is very important, I urge you to vote yes on Prop 1. Save Idaho horse racing and help our economy grow. Vote yes on Prop 1, and it will bring back and create hundreds of good-paying jobs and help the growth of Idaho's equine-related businesses. It's time now to return the horse industry of Idaho to being one of our leading agricultural businesses. Please don't be swayed by misrepresentations and false statements. Vote Vote yes on Prop 1, November 6th, paid for by the Committee to Save Idaho Horse Racing, Create Jobs, and Fund Idaho Schools. All right. Calls welcome. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Talking about this Honduras deal going on here. You know, uh, in my thought, it's always been the Democratic Party preys on uh, illegals and immigrants in the country for a vote. Hold on just a minute, Riley. Wheels, you've got to bring up his voice, please. We can't hear a word he's saying. Go ahead again, Riley, please. I, I was saying it, it, the Democratic Party, it seems, depends on the immigrant vote and illegal alien vote. What they don't realize is all the people that they are alienating from the party would probably vote for them if they didn't change their stance on things and get more and more uh, outlandish or whatever term you want to use, if they would just focus at home and work with the people here and do what the people are asking to do, they would get more votes than they could ever dream of getting from from a- illegal aliens or uh, immigrants. And it's pretty pitiful that instead of trying to get your votes from the United States people, you're trying to get it from a foreign country. And I'll let you go. And that's uh, I appreciate your content there and what you said, because uh, they are, the left, the Democrats, trying to buy votes. They are trying to buy a permanency, if you will, with our elections. And I find it despicable. I, anything. I guess the bottom line is, folks... Do you really consider you want Nancy Pelosi and that kind of leadership if Nancy Pelosi takes back over as Speaker of the House and the Democrats take over the House? Do you want the mess? And it's like tipping over about a million cat litter boxes. Do you want the mess that that's going to create? They're not going to get anything done politically. All they're going to do is go after Trump. All they're going to do is go after Kavanaugh. All they're going to do is stop, stymie, and completely stick in the mud anything that this administration is trying to do for the betterment of our country and us. Think. Vote. November 6th. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I just, uh, some of the media is so phony, plastic, and unbelievable in their outright lies and innuendos about what's happening in the news today and what's happening with this administration. I mean... Finally, some people in Congress, some senators, not very many, some congressmen, not very many, are saying that they absolutely are starting to be, starting to be, my goodness, we've been preaching this on this program for the last, I don't know how many years. They're starting to be concerned about the communicable diseases that are coming in with these refugees and illegal aliens. They're starting to be concerned about the politics and the crime. Starting to be? Well, good morning, congressmen and senators. It's about time you woke up. 
Call her, I'll be right there. Don't forget Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. They are absolutely a wonderful veterinary hospital for large and small animals. They love them all, take care of them all. Don't forget Dr. Bill, Dr. Jordan, the whole crew. If you've got problems with your livestock, health problems, you've got a little bitty kitty cat that's sick, they can help and they will. They love animals and they want to help serve you. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn. And remember the number 6781177 where they have warm hearts for cold noses. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. I'm very, very angry, too, about this uh, illegals coming in. May I make a comment on a commercial you did just a few minutes ago about Prop 1? Yes. Okay. I've heard all kinds. I haven't heard but one time, you know, people for Prop 1, so many against Prop uh, 1. But I haven't. has anyone refuted this claim that they're making that only half of 1%? goes to the schools of that money. Let me ask you something, Adrian, and, and I mean this. Can you think of any other industry or anything else that says and is be, being demanded of where they have to take some of the proceeds and give it back to public education? You can't name one, I'll bet. No, I can't. I need you to speak up a little bit. So much. Yeah. Uh, the people that are thinking this is going to turn Idaho into a glitzy Reno or Las Vegas with gambling lights and casinos, that's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. What it is going to do is save one of the biggest agricultural industries in the United States, and let alone how important it is to Idaho, and that's the horse industry. You of anybody know that's true. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's totally true. And also the fact that there'll be these machines will be all over the They won't be. They'll only be at the tracks. That's right. They when, if they look at the facts, they know that it's the casinos that are fighting it because it's money out of their pocket. Absolutely. And people who are not informed. But I, I don't know if it's lack of funding or not enough people are standing up, but we've got to vote. That prop one. Absolutely. You know what? It's not just for the racehorse going down the track and the people screaming and yelling. It's not for the paramutual. It's for the feed store, the tax store. It's for the trailer sales. It's for the horse and insurance business. It's for all the related businesses and jobs and everything else to have a resurgence of the horse industry in the state of Idaho. To vote no against this is absolutely like shooting yourself in the foot. Well, it certainly hurt my income if it if i were in that business today like i was in the past uh it would make a great dent in it by not having this well i get so sick and tired of these people that say oh it's going to just create a gambling mecca no it's not because the gambling and the uh, paramutual on the historic races only takes place at the tracks and by the way those tracks have to have eight race days before they qualify so we're talking burley malad maybe pocatello etc we're in Bois. look at what happened to la Bois. it's a rusting mess so sad. Uh, and many of those places actually had borders other than the race days, too, so there was an income there. Yeah. But people just do not want to know the facts. They like the propaganda. Well, they're going to hear the facts on this program, regardless of how they feel, mad or agree with me. They're going to keep hearing the facts. Thank you for your call. And by the way, I tried to call your number yesterday and didn't get an answer. I just wanted you to know I was following up. Oh, okay. Uh, should I contact you later? Yeah, uh, this afternoon sometime, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Know the facts before you condemn anything. Caller, I'll be right there. I can say that all the time this morning. Caller, I'll be right there. Well, it's true, I will be. Don't forget Forever Green Lawn and Tree Service, 423-6454. You know, Christmas, whether you want to admit it or not, it's right around the corner. And if you don't want to hang your lights, and it's kind of tough maybe to get out there and do all the Christmas tree lighting, etc., let them 
do it. They've got a very experienced staff at Forever Green Lawn and Tree Service. All you need to do is call and tell them what you need. They design custom fitting light strands to match the specific needs of your house or business. Believe me, they are the best and they'll give you a free quote. So call today for an appointment, 423-6454, Forever Green Lawn and Tree Service. Absolutely a great idea. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. It's the yummy man. Well, it sounds like him. Uh, today is birthday anniversary dinner with turkey, dressing, mashed taters and gravy, green beans. Oh, we'll have some cranberry jello and yummy dessert. Okay, Joe, what is the yummy dessert? Well, the reason I say that is because I really didn't ask or don't know. <laughs> but it'll be good. It's going to be a Joe Taylor special yummy dessert. Now, we also have takeout meals. If you order before, before 12 o'clock, you can come pick up a meal to go. Well, I'll guarantee you that you get enough to eat. All right, at the Senior Junction right there on Overland, and the man that reigns supreme, he's the king over there, Joe Taylor. God bless you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, you betcha. Take care. Good friend, good guy right there, Joe Taylor. Calls welcome, 436 224 Give us a call. Uh... Let's see, I wanted to talk uh, about this, defining hate speech. There are movements going on here in the state of Idaho and many, many, many other places and locations to where the left and various groups and organizations are defining what you and I can say what is written about or what is broadcast. They want to make sure that they are defining hate speech. Now, I got to thinking about this last night. And can you really help me out on this? Call me and define what really is hate speech. Is it speaking against issues? that are out of the normal? Is it condemning dangerous lifestyles and happenings? Is it standing up for the principles of, like the Bible? Hmm. And if someone on the left doesn't like that, are they automatically going to be uh, given a free pass to condemn you, try to come after you, And close your mouth because they consider what you said hate speech. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Well, you know, and for all intents and purposes, um, especially on college campuses, uh, anything conservative, traditional values is already considered hate speech. I mean, they don't allow conservative speakers on campuses. That's right. Uh, If you're conservative, you probably won't get tenure. And if you don't get tenure, uh, then you're basically fired. And that's happened in Idaho. A friend of mine that took that, that he he just was on the wrong side of issues with his superiors, and he didn't get tenure. And he was one of the best best, uh, people in his department, but that didn't make any difference, I mean, as far as what he was doing for research. Yeah, but let's stay on track here for a minute, real fast, Adrian, because I've got a weather forecast in less than 60 seconds. How How do people or groups define hate speech? How would they define something that Adrian said as hate speech? How would they define something as what I say on the radio as hate speech? Who has that right to make a definition against free speech and the First Amendment, versus what they condemn as hate speech. Well, they don't have any authority to do it. That's right. In public opinion, you know, and so now we have free speech uh, locations on campuses where you can, uh, you know, you have to designate. I mean, this is in total violation of the Bill of Rights. That's right. I mean, 
and we better be standing up for this because this is exactly where our country's going, where your only politically correct speech is allowed. And like I say, when you can't get your viewpoint out, then I can guarantee you, just here locally, you know, I write letters to the editor, and if it's my opinion, and the editor, the well, last two letters I've turned in, he took exception to something I had to say. It was my opinion. Yep. But he took exception to it and and literally forced me to say something. I changed the wording in my uh, letter. So it's happening right here with our local paper. And so, you know, and this never used to be the case. I understand. Uh, We're going to be talking a lot more about this. uh, Free speech, dying, and hate speech, and the pointing the finger at people and shutting them up. We're going to be talking more. I've got to get to a weather, Adrian. I appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, just just realize that this is happening here locally. I mean, it it, it really is. So I would like to invite people next Thursday um, to... CSI at 7 o'clock, they're going to discuss the whistleblowers, going to talk about the United Nations, where we're bringing in refugees and so forth. At 7 o'clock, uh, there's no admission charge. Uh, donation is, is welcome. And uh, that's going to be next Thursday, CSI, up at the Taylor Building. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. And I'll, I'll plug that for you a couple of more times on this thank program, you. too. Thank you very much. Woo! Got to get to the weather. Weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they are located right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room. And I'm going to give you the number right now to con- get a hold of them. And if you're having hearing problems, they can help and they will help. Excellent people that know hearing health. Three doctors over there that really know audiology. And they really can serve you. So write this number down. 312-0957. I'll say it again. 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And believe me, when it comes to your hearing health, you want to work with the best? They are. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Here's Gina with the weather. Looks like the sunshine and warmer temperatures are going to be sticking around for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch today. Another beautiful day in the valley, expecting sunny skies with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 5 miles an hour tonight. Nice and clear with a low of 32. Tomorrow, another beautiful day. Sunny skies, expecting a high of 34 with an overnight low of 34. As we hit Friday, sunny skies and 64. Slightly breezy winds out of the south at about 5 miles an hour. Nice and clear for Friday night with a low of 34. By Saturday, sunny skies and 67, close to 70 by Sunday. Sunny skies and 68 is what we're expecting. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth. Oh, uh, Gina, you do a great job. Appreciate it. And brought to you this hour by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. They are really, really good, and they want to help you. Call the number 312-0957. I want to really get back into this def- defining of hate speech. There are people in groups that absolutely are going to be listening. There are people in groups on campuses that have already started turning people in for the possible rejection of their student availability on campus. You know, if you're raised with a certain standard and value system by your mom and dad and your parents and you believe that getting up going to church on Sunday morning listening and honoring and doing what the Bible says and living your life accordingly the next week understanding that you have values that your mom and dad and your grandparents and your forefathers and mothers said this is the right way to be and live your life and you adhere to that you have every right i would assume in a free society like america underneath that first amendment to live your life as such as long as it's within the confines of our laws But to have groups say, I don't like that. I'm going to come after you. And you can't say that. 
Or we're going to make sure we stop and stifle and put tape over your mouth so you can never say it again. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Take, for instance, the LGBTQ or LGBT, whatever their initials will be, or maybe it's a conglomeration of all of them. They are after right now uh, getting special rights and special privileges to shut up the public and churches that absolutely denounce and condemn that lifestyle. But we have every right to say that. If we're raised in a Christian home, why don't I have the right to say that and say that that lifestyle is out of normal? I do. I have that right. If they want to say the opposite, they also have that right. But they don't have the right to shut me up. They don't have the right to just basically pave over my remarks or yours. And when they say that they're going to go to various cities and they're going to stop hate speech, how and what are they going to stop? Are they going to go to the pastor at a church that maybe has a sermon on Ecclesiastes regarding that lifestyle as being not the right way to live? Oh boy, we got to shut that church down. Got to stop that Bible from being printed. You see, I want somebody to define for me hate speech and how it's not going to be basically a leftist movement to stifle any and all speech. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. As long as I'm on the air, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. There's no future in that. I don't want to be like the Democrats. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. i got to tell everybody about Dino Septic Service. I'll tell you what. They do a job that you and I don't want to do. They do it well. They've expanded their business. It's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And they can better serve more of the Magic Valley. Dino Septic Service. Septic tanks pumped. Septic tanks and drain fields installed. Water and sewer lines installed. Septic inspections. Liquid waste removal. Ooh, with a big truck that says, smells cargo on the way. Numbers to call 436-6526 or in Burley 678-1638. You call them. Dino Septic Service, the best. Caller, good morning and thank you for your call. You betcha. Hey, the only way the left, the Democrats, can win an argument with conservatives is to stifle their speech because they can't win it with facts. And when you push facts out there, that's hate speech to the left. Yep. And so what do they do? They come after us, and, and they do it in a non, uh, not-so-subtle way. Like in my case, they go after my advertisers. You can't sponsor him! Why, he says hate speech every day in their definition. And a lot of businesses, uh, not in this area so much, but elsewhere around the United States, Doug, they cower and they run. Exactly. They do. And uh, it's, it's a sad deal, but uh, that's one of the way in uh, Skolinski's book of how to take a country over is to limit the speech, take away the First Amendment. And that's how they're doing it, one step at a time. Absolutely. By political correctness. Yep, absolutely. And I do not believe in political correctness. Now, you don't believe in political correctness. Oh, gee, there are two people that have the right to exercise their free speech, and they said they don't like PC. Now somebody's going to try to shut us up. <laughs> Let them try. Yeah. Let them try. Because I, I won't be silenced. Well, I won't either because I pay too much for this program. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't pay anything to get on. I do have customers that will stop in. I've, in fact, I've even had some people that aren't customers have stopped in and thanked me for what I do for the seniors and thanked me for talking to you on the air. And that means a lot. You bet your life. Hey, i got one more call waiting, and I've got to do a commercial. Doug, thank you so much. You All right, God take care. Everybody.
everybody. Let's do what we can for our seniors. All right. We'll eat some yummy dessert at any senior center around the Magic Valley. There you go. Thank you. Caller number two, don't go away. I'm going to do this commercial. I'll be right with you. Time is wasting. Hold on just a minute. I want to tell everybody about a fall tire sale that's going on right now. At all seven locations of the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, oh my goodness, all the tires, like your car tires, on sale, pickup tires, SUV tires, trailer tires, tires on sale for the big fall tire sale. Along with that, the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. I want to urge you to have your battery tested, and boy, these cooler mornings, colder mornings, make sure it's going to do the job, and they've got a lot of great batteries right there at every location with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I've got exactly one minute. Go fast. I can go fast. Freedom of speech. You know, my wife is going to come to lunch bunch in the cutest costume you ever seen. I mean, I want you to take that prize that you're going to have for that and just set it aside because she will win. And win big. Uh, all right, that's her husband talking, but we do things on a uh, most popular vote contest, and I will not be swayed or have my arm twisted to give anybody a prize without a popular vote. Well, I have some money in my pocket. That won't work either because money's just as phony as anything else today. I won't do it. I got to run, Keith. Good luck, and thank you for your call. I told you I got I got to run. And so do you, the customers. Keith, bye. Got to run. News next, CBS. Talk to you next hour. Thanks. Holy moly. Bunch of crazies in the news. Morning, everybody. Zeb at the ranch, Zeb Bell, and, of course, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations, our major sponsor. You stop in and check out the great big fall tire sale that's going on right now. Along with some of our great advertisers, like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Sweet. Two in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, another great advertiser. Here's Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always the children of Western Waste Services. We care about our community, our resources, and the streets. Western Waste Services. I tell you what, if you are uh, new in the area and you need someone to pick up your garbage, get on the route service of Western Waste Services. Always at your disposal. Easy, easy. Just call their number, 734-6969. Very dependable, very professional. Western Waste Services, 734-6969. Want to remind you that on Thursday tomorrow at nine seventeen, we're going to learn more about the great people, the dedicated medical experts that are serving you at Casher Regional Hospital. Absolutely, some of the best people, your friends, your neighbors, and we're going to find out and meet more of them tomorrow. Casher Regional Hospital, quality care, close to home. You know, I've been telling you a long time, the last couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, about Ramsey Heating and Electric, over six decades of serving you along with Lennox products. Well, they can keep you comfortable and save you money. Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering up to $1,600 in rebates on qualifying equipment purchases. So call or stop in today at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley or give them a call at 678-0459. Ramsey Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox serving you. One last word, and it's for a good, good friend of ours and yours that's been serving us for a long time. 
And that's District 27 State Representative Fred Wood urging you to go to the polls and vote on November 6th. Fred has been serving us in the state uh, legislature for a long, long time, does an excellent job, and he wants you to understand and know Proposition 1 and 2 and be sure and vote on November 6th. Paid for by District 27 Representative Fred Wood. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line and say good morning to a very, very good friend of ours back in Indianapolis, Indiana, Dave Bego. Good morning. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. I'm doing fine. Hope you and uh, your wife are doing well. Well, I tell you what, we're in the middle of some of the nicest weather that we've had in a long, long time. It looks like for the next eight or nine days, it might be in the high 60s, low 70s, sunshine, no clouds. Woo! When are you going to move out to Idaho? <laughs> well, it's sunny here, no clouds, but uh, overnight it was like 40. 5, 46 degrees, today's high is 55 or 56, but we're supposed to get a uh, cold front coming through tomorrow where uh, the highs might be uh, in the high 40s, uh, around 50. Well, you know, Dave, what you just said really is something that I paid attention to this morning. I always try to get a national forecast, a complete synopsis of what's going on, but basically across the nation, most of the United States is 20 to 30 degrees cooler than average, and it looks like you're going to see that. Yeah, yeah. It, um, um, it's kind of strange that we're getting it uh, this early in the season, but you know what well, the interesting thing is? Um, are the trees and the grass here are still green. Yeah. We're, not, we're getting a little fall color turn, but not a lot so far, even with this cold weather. There's quite a few things I want to talk with you about this morning, and number one, I have made many, many statements in regard to President Trump, and I stand up and salute him for stopping this migration of over 3,000 marchers coming up from Central America, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, etc., and saying, enough, you're not coming in here, and if your countries let you try to come in here, we're cutting off foreign aid. What are your thoughts? No, that's what we need to do. And, uh, you know, again, Zeb, um, people go back and read my blogs from several years ago, um, I said we got to stop this stuff, and uh, we got to control our borders, and uh, because um, you know it, it uh, hurts our economy, and uh, also the far left uses these people, uh, um, gets them in to vote, whether they're legally legally can vote or not. Uh, for their political agenda, you know, to get their people voted in. You know as well as I do, Dave, and we got just a touch of feedback there, Wheels, if you would, please. You know as well as I do that these people are being basically paid for to come here and be rabble-rousers. And what really gripes me is that my tax dollars and yours are being used to provide foreign aid to these countries, but now, if we let these people in, not only are we providing the foreign aid to El Salvador, etc., but we're also going to have to pay for these people, their food, housing, transportation, etc. We are getting a double whammy to the American taxpayer, and I've had it. Well, I agree with you 100%. Again, I've written about these things in my blogs, because these people get on entitlement and welfare programs and everything else. And, uh, you know, and, and I basically said in my blogs that... We're a nation of laws, and we need to obey the laws. If people are going to come into this country, they got to go through the process and qualify. Otherwise, you don't come into this country. You said something a minute ago that a lot of people don't understand and realize, and I want you to explain it and be more definitive. But with these people coming in, basically under the welcoming arms and umbrella of the left, the Democrats, and going to metropolitan areas, be it, uh, let's say, Tampa Bay, Florida, or whether it's Chicago or New York or whatever, Whatever. That changes the demographics just like the Democrats want for more potential voters and power. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, we fought the SEIU, and um, we know because um, we had people tell us, and they even had people, uh, a lady on a radio program was on, say, you know, I'm, I'm not here legally to vote, but the SEIU, and this was out in Nevada, uh, put us on buses and took us to the... Um, the, the polls to have us vote um, to get Democrats uh, elected. 
and uh, they told us who to book for. And um, even in my book, I, um, uh, a gal in California who is here legally from Egypt, um, she said the SEIU would bring them in before um, you know any elections and send them down and say, this is who you're going to vote for, and you better vote for them. If not, we're going to come after you. Uh, and these were legal Americans. So, you know, this is how they're trying to control this country. Yep. You know, Dave, uh, there's so many things that I'm worried about. And finally, finally, after all this time, a couple of senators, a couple of congressmen have said, oh, oh, my, why, these people are coming in with communicable diseases, and we don't know what they are and what they've been treated for or not. Oh, these people are coming in, and uh, we don't know what we're going to do. They've not been vetted. Why, why is it taking so much time for these senators to wake up and smell the coffee? It's because, uh, Zeb, and again, I've talked about this many times before, uh, people get into politics and they stay in there too long. And, uh, you know, it's it's all about them because of the pay they get and the benefits and the retirement programs and everything. And what we need is we need term limits. People go in and they're in for a couple terms and they're out and they do the right things for this country and their states and, and everything and then they go back to the private sector and work. You know, it's amazing. I wished I would have kept a compilation of all the absolutely heinous and filthy and stupid statements the Democrats have said in the last six months, not only regarding the Kavanaugh hearing, but other things. But another Democrat in Minnesota last night made a really stupid statement. He said, after the election in November... We ought to round up all the Republicans and let them face the guillotine. Dave, these are the kind of inflammatory and stupid statements that are causing a great division in our country today. Well, and that's what their agenda is. That's their intent. It's just like uh, when the SEIU attacked our company and, you know, other cleaning companies across the country. They use these same tactics against them to uh, divide your... uh, employees and uh, your company and everything and that so they can bring you down and uh, control you and uh, they're trying to do the same thing here and they know that there's enough people out there that they can brainwash with their misinformation and lies and uh, and things like that it's it's the far left it's not all democrats because i i have to tell you i've sat down with uh, democrats and uh, there's a lot of them that aren't happy uh, with the far left side of the party that's true uh, but, that's but true the far left is is the real problem and it's you know, Soros and the unions and, and other people. But you will agree that even though it isn't the all-encompassing all word, it's the squeaky wheel or the loud mouse, in their case, that get the grease. And they're the ones that are getting the media. Oh, yeah. Well, they control the media behind the scenes. And uh, if you remember in my book, uh, I talk about why Glenn Beck's not Fox anymore. Right, right. Because uh, he went after the SEIU, and the SEIU went after Fox's advertisers, and Fox started losing revenues. And um, uh, the SEIU called Fox and said, get rid of Beck, we'll leave your advertisers alone. So they, they fired him. Yeah. And these are the type of things that happen behind the scenes all the time. You know, if give me an explanation. You're a businessman. You're highly respected in what you do. You know a lot of top-notch political people back in Indiana. Please tell me. How and why could anyone with our economy booming and uh, a president and an administration that are really concerned about security, they're really concerned about our police and our, our military, how and why could anybody go to the polls this fall in November and vote Democrat? Please help me on that. Well, just, just uh, it's very simple. It's the... It's, uh... It's the people on the far left that are throwing this stuff out there, and they know a lot of people are naive and can be brainwashed, and they go out and do this. And uh, the unions are pushing hard right now. In fact, I just uh, got an article uh, yesterday that in uh, Pennsylvania uh, they think that uh, the um, unions will, um, um, the Pennsylvania unions, uh, are the ones that will be responsible for flipping the house. And uh, because um, they, they've got uh, behind the scenes so many people worked up and uh, they've put so much money into it. Um, and so, and then the polls are showing now that uh, the uh, Democrats may, may get the House, not the Senate, but the House. And, uh, but it's 
behind the scenes, it's the unions that's pushing all this. Yeah, but there again, uh, the poster child for maybe taking over the House and Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. My goodness, why would anybody in their right mind, which leads to another discussion, why would you want to ever try to give her another opportunity to be the Speaker of the House? This woman borders on insanity. Well, again, Zeb, I know it's uh, it's not how they don't they don't look at these people that way. They talk about all the other things and how bad some of the Republicans are, and uh, you know they it's it, you, you gotta understand um, they uh, they do this stuff to uh, uh, brainwash people and uh, and get them out there the votes uh, to um, to vote and everything, and and uh, it's uh, you know like the SEIU. Um, uh, they gave them, they've put in a million dollars into uh, the, the current uh, governor's campaign, and now they're putting in even more for this campaign. And um, uh, it's just they're trying to bring in the people they want that will in turn do things to uh, help unions, force unionized people, and grow back to their their status, you know, 30, 40 years ago. I want to ask you about a lady, and I look at her and I see a lady, a very beautiful, knowledgeable, smart lady, and that happens to be Melania Trump. This poor woman is under attack by any and all aspects of the left. They don't like the way she dresses. They don't like the way she walks down a plane. She doesn't like the way she stands behind President Trump. Good heavens, the other day they were touring the disaster area that hit by the hurricane in Georgia, she was wearing a baseball cap, and now she's being criticized for that. Oh yeah, this, Zeb, this is what they do. I've been through it, and I've seen it all. And uh, this is what they do to you, and they call you things. You know, you, you racist and, and bullies and everything. The true thing is, they're the bullies on the other side, and uh, they go through this stuff. And uh, it's it's all Saul Lins- Linsky, Linsky tactics. And America needs to wake up to this fact, and uh, you know the um, the left needs to expose them for what they really are. And Trump is doing some of that, but uh, you know they they got to have a backbone and expose even more that this stuff they're saying out there is just not true. And America, you need to wake up. Well, and it's even got to the point of being so low class or no class. Uh, somebody uh, put together a video supposedly that looks like Melania Trump acting as a stripper in the White House Oval Office. Now, if someone on the right had done that against Michelle Obama, which I would inject here, I doubt seriously if anybody watched the video, if it was Michelle Obama. But anyhow, if somebody had done that against Michelle Obama, all heck would have broken loose. Well, that's exactly right, and uh, it's because they control the media, and the media would have come out and really hammered them for it. And, uh, you know, that's uh, it's uh, people got to understand the tactics and the agenda of the left. And the, and their tactics are like these, what we're seeing, and their agenda is to, you know, win back the House and Senate and the President and bring this country down because they want to turn us into a socialistic country. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question. Quickly, caller, you're on the air, please. Yes, Deb, thanks. I'd like the uh, guest to discuss why Zeb Bell and the guest and anybody else doesn't use the real term communist. We have we don't have a Democratic Party here in the United States. We have a Republican Party and we have a Communist Party. And it's not being discussed, it's not being written about, it's not being put up to the public as such. It's just kind of like pussyfooting around. And I don't care for that. Well, okay, hold on, sir. I'm going to make a rebuttal to you. If you listen every day to this program in its entirety then you'll find that your statement was wrong. Because I have on many, many occasions compared the Democratic Party to socialist and communist party actics and movements. And so don't say that. And you go right back to 
calling it the Democratic Party. Well, okay, now just a minute. Let's not mince words here. Let's just be straight across the table with each other. That is the terminology of their party under the current form, Republican and Democrat. I think we're going to see the demise of the Democratic Party within the next two years, and it's going to go to something else, if at all, anything. I think we're going to see them falter and fail. But don't criticize me on my program for using Democrat because that is the party that is still in power for the left. Well, thanks, Zeb. All right, sir. But maybe this is one of the reasons the other Democrats aren't going to call in is because of, of, of your present attitude in not changing the name Democrat to Communist. Well, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Why should they be mad at me for using the Democratic Party? Because that's still the terminology that is correct, and I'll use it that way. I think that they've taken great strides to be a part of the Communist or Socialistic Party, and I've said that on my program. So why are you hammering at me? They are pure Communist. And they're using you to cover up their... Oh, they're not using me. I don't like you making an insinuation that I'm being used, because I'm not being used by anybody. But you can insinuate against me. Well, thanks, Zeb. I did it. Uh, All right, buddy. You sure made a nice call there, uh, basically saying I'm being used. Uh, Beagle, how would you respond to that caller? Well, you know, legally, it's still the Democratic Party. That's right. uh, We have to... um, acknowledge that and uh yeah are they uh, the far left part of the party moving to the socialist and communistic uh agenda absolutely i've talked about that on your program many times yes uh but they're still legally um by by law the democratic party and the terminology i'm being used that really offends me i don't think that you've known me now for five six seven eight nine years whatever it is nobody uses me no no and uh you know they're not using you for this. Um, it's just, uh, it's, um, you, you know, you're being, you're doing things the right way and, and, and talking things in a legal way. Uh, but you do talk about where it's moving towards. Absolutely. Well, that was interesting. I feel like I better go find another can of deodorant. I'm all sweaty and hot. So anyway, <laughs> what's uh, what else is on the agenda this morning before we have to say goodbye? Uh, I don't think anything else, but I I think it's funny that you're sweaty and hot. I hope you're not stinky. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, beautiful weather. I enjoy my program. I'm not being used by anybody. I wish that person would come up and say that to my face instead of on the radio. They know who I am. I don't know who they are. That's the unfortunate part. But we have to ride with the flow and take the criticism. Dave Beagle in Indianapolis, Indiana, I hope you have a wonderful day. Well, to you too, and uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Your good weather continues. All right, buddy. See you next week. Thank you so much. All right. You take care. All right. Good friend of mine, Dave Bego, Indianapolis, Indiana, and we appreciate him being on the show. Don't forget, there is a wonderful new business, and I know this lady, and I know that she is really, really concerned about seniors, and the business is called Minicasha Hearts for Seniors. It's located at 135 East 23rd Drive in Burley, and the number to call, 312-5715. You know, this is a business to help seniors stay at home and a lot of folks don't want to leave they don't want to go to a retirement center whatever hey listen they help with daily tasks and personal hygiene and light housekeeping and maybe a little companionship for the seniors so they can enjoy staying at home minicasha hearts for seniors the number to call 312-5715 or go to the website holly at hearts for seniors dot net Well, I'm all invigorated and ready to go. Good morning, everybody, and uh, we're going to have another guest on in just a moment. As Also, I want to remind you about our friends at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636, with Joel Heward, his family, and the staff, serving you and your family. There is nothing more stressing to a family than the passing of a loved one and the time frames that have to be adhered to and everything and getting all the information put together. They can help and they will help. 
please remember Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. And remember also Joel Heward serving you at Morris and Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Really nice people. Okay, that being said, I also want to remind you that in just a moment we're going to have one of my favorite guests on the program, and that's Megan Barth. And Megan tells it like it is, and we really appreciate and respect her. We want to mention, too, about our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Holy cow, they're having a great big harvest sale. I mean, this is really something. No money down, no interest, up to 48 months on approved credit, 40% off. Wow, we're talking furniture, mattresses, dining room sets, motion furniture, bedroom groups, all of this and more. You'd better get in and check it out. And the fall flooring closeout specials. All of this at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. You be sure and stop down and see Jeff and the crew today. Lee's Furniture Floors and more. One more great business that I want to talk about before I go to the phone line, and that's our friends at Let's Ride. (laughs) Uh, I was thinking the other night, as a matter of fact, all the years that we've enjoyed our four-wheelers, our ATVs, thanks to Nick over there at Let's Ride. Man, that's been a lot of fun to get out and get up in the hills and see all the fall colors and everything. Thank you. And right now, also on the showroom floor, all the snowmobiles. Well, I'll tell you what, you'd better get in there today. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And along with all the snowmobiles and the four-wheelers, they've got all the accessories. But above all... They've got a super service department to keep you running. Absolutely. Get a hold of them today. Great folks. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 over in the Rupert area. And, of course, this is where the fun is sold. Let's go to the phone line right now, and as I said, one of my very favorite people to come on this program uh, from down in the Las Vegas area, Megan Barth, how are you? Hi, is that doing well? Thank you. How are you? You know what, Megan? I'm upset. I'm mad because of the way things are going in this country. A lack of free speech, a lack of respect for the American taxpayer, a total lack of civility on the left, and idiots basically trying to control the left. Woo, where do I start? Uh, well, is it any wonder that the left mascot is a jackass? Um, <laughs> you know, you look at the Democrat uh, platform, uh, and it's basically just a hollowed shell, but they will certainly uh, ensure that they will raise taxes because Nancy Pelosi wants the crumbs back. Um, she is more determined when she gets the gavel uh, to not only destroy President Trump, uh, through at least uh, 51 separate uh, uh, investigations, uh, which they promised to do from a leak me- leaked memo. Uh, but she also, like many Democrats, would want to destroy the country. Uh, and that, and b- destroying the country means attacking the middle class with higher taxes, attacking smaller bu- small businesses with high taxes, attacking corporations uh, with high taxes, uh, in order to give us the <clears throat> return to the grand old days of the Obama malaise. Uh, and uh, the actually, the uh, I can't remember which uh, international organization, I think it was the European Union, but I might be wrong, just noted that the American economy uh, is doing gangbusters. Uh, we are back on top of the world economy again in just short two years. And, that, and since this has been, they have been recording this, they say since 2008 uh, and prior to Obama's election, uh, the economy has never been so strong. Megan, 
what are you hearing? I mean, you do a lot of radio programs. You talk to a lot of people. What are you hearing is kind of a groundswell of support, pro or con, for the Democrats and their issues? I really have not run into maybe more than one or two people in the last month that are even halfway thinking of supporting Democratic issues and Democratic Party candidates. What are you hearing? Well, I'm hearing more and more people are walking away from the Democrat Party uh, because the Democrat Party is walking away from the American people. Uh, They've turned their back on legal citizens. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said at Harvard University yesterday that if she gets the gavel, the first thing the Democrats are going to do outside of destroying President Trump, she didn't say that, but that's exactly what she wants to do um, with all these investigations, is that they are going to protect legal immigrants. (laughs) Uh, it will be interesting to see what this Honduran uh, caravan of over 2,000 and growing illegal immigrants that plan on storming our border, making their way through Mexico. Uh, it will be interesting to see if that becomes a midterm election issue. Um, I'm actually hoping it does because it's going to backfire on the Democrats. Um, when you turn your back on the American people, the American people are going to turn their back on you. Uh, and so we just have to use the words of the left against them. Um, they have shown uh, time and time again uh, that they lack, uh, they lack the, uh, I, I would say, courage uh, to do the right thing because they are so hell-bent uh, on fundamentally transforming this country. Barack Obama promised that to us in 2008. Uh, they plan on carrying out his wishes. And what, it, how can you love something if you need and want to fundamentally transform it. Uh, We see a rise of socialism uh, in the Democrat Party with new uh, proudly socialist candidates. Uh, Tom Perez, the leader of the DNC, says the rising star out of Brooklyn, uh, Cortez, uh, who is a proud socialist, is the future of the Democrat Party. So the more and more the Democrat Party embrace radical ideas, Uh, embrace lawlessness, uh, embrace socialism, I believe that this identity crisis that the Democrats are having are going to turn away more people from the Democrat Party, except for millennials. I agree. Uh, Millennials, I'm concerned about simply because uh, they have voting power. Uh, However, when you look at the fundraising numbers, uh, the Republicans are outraising the Democrats uh, I think it's three to one. Uh, but when you look at voter registration, uh, the Democrats are registering more voters. This does not necessarily mean that the, there's going to be a blue wave, because historically millennials simply just don't show up to the polls. Megan, last half hour, and by the way, we have a caller. Caller, stay on the line. Be patient. I'll be right with you. But last half hour, I had a gentleman call me and criticize me for calling the Democratic Party the Democratic Party. He said, you should stop that and start calling it what it is, the Communist Party. Well, what would your response be to that gentleman that criticized the use of the terminology Democrat Party? Um, You know, I I don't really think that he's far off base. I think we have to call a spade a spade. When you see, you know, socialism is simply just the economic structure of communism. Uh, It is, you know, the the framework uh, of a communist uh, uh, political ideology. So when you look at the platform of the Democrat Party, which isn't uh, abundantly available because they necessarily don't have one. That's right. Uh, But historically, you could basically take their platform and it fits right into the Communist Manifesto. Everything is supposed to come from government. Everyone's supposed to be dependent on government, Uh, especially when the Democrats now uh, are basically not acknowledging that the takeover of one-sixth of our economy through Obamacare was a massive failure. Uh, Now they're saying just simply that it's single-payer. Well, single-payer is where the government controls uh, and rations your health care. It it is not free. Uh, It only is cheap uh, because it's not widely available. Um, It will destroy Medicare uh, for seniors. Uh, But the Democrats don't care who they destroy as long as uh, in their quest uh, 
and during this destruction, they achieve absolute power well, and, uh, through government control. And on this program, many, many times, hundreds of times, I've said that the Democrats have absolutely accepted the socialistic and communistic aspects uh, in their party. But I think that, like I told the caller the last half hour, it's still called the Democratic Party. Right. And, and you know, Democrats have a way of, of using uh, euphemistic terminology um, in order to uh, basically put lipstick on a pig, if you will, uh, whereby, you know, Obamacare was called the affordable, uh, what was it called, the affordable, uh, the ACA. The affordable, the affordable Care Act, Act yes. Yeah, there was nothing affordable about it, uh, and there was nothing caring about it. Uh, but, but this is how the Democrats use, uh, you know, the language to disguise their true motivation. Uh, we- these euphemistic flowery terms uh, that have absolutely nothing to do with the end results. It, Obamacare was always simply just the platform and the foundation by which they could build then into single payer. Absolutely. Uh, Obamacare really was supposed to fail. Uh, because they needed it to fail in order to pave the way for ultimate control through single payer. I agree. We got a caller with a phone call. He wants to get in on the program. Caller, you're on the air. Please go ahead, please. Well, either Marx or Lenin said that the keystone to the arts was health care. And uh, so, you know, uh, I know the gentleman that called in, and he's a great guy. And, uh, He's frustrated like the rest of us because, really, you know, they really are just communists. Socialists are just frustrated communists. Yeah, but Randy, Randy, wait a minute. I'm going to jump in on this. I don't think I deserve to be jumped on. You know that you listen every day, and I have compared the Democratic Party to the Socialists and the Communist values for a long time, years on this program. And to say that I'm being uh, manipulated by them, I took great offense at that. Yeah, I know... I'm not disagreeing with you, Zeb. I just happen to know the caller, and it's a frustrating time. We're frustrated. We shouldn't take offense to each other because we're all patriots. We need to understand that the enemy was Obamacare, and Obama and anybody that is trying to take away free market capitalism and my sovereign right to make a decision on my own. And so when you have Ocasio-Cortez, who is a moron, she doesn't know nothing. She's as dumb as a post, and, and people are actually listening to her. And if you study what she says, there's no logical basis in what she says. Oh. And we've got Paulette Jordan, who's running for governor in Idaho, who is of the same mold, and she's in Idaho. This is in our backyard. This is in our faith. And uh, it's a scary time. I'll hang out. Uh, respond to the caller, if you would, please, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he makes, you know, excellent points, and I'm glad, honestly, uh, uh, to, to hear the frustration. Uh, because, uh, you know, there, there's two ways that, well, there's one way that gets people motivated uh, it, through emotion. The other emotion makes people dependent. And what I mean by that is frustration is a part of anger. And anger is a very motivating emotion which means that we need to get to the polls. And I'm talking about not just the midterms, okay? The midterms are as important as the 2016 general election. I have long said that the fight has never been between Republicans and Democrats or red and blue. The fight is between socialism and capitalism. And so every time you see a D on the ticket, you make sure you reject the D. Absolutely. I don't care if they come across as moderate. Because inside every progressive Democrat, they like to call themselves progressives now, right? Yep. Inside every progressive is a totalitarian screaming to get out. So when you not only go to the midterm elections, you go to the school board election. You go to the special election. You go to any election in your town because all politics is local. Once a Democrat gets their foot in the door, I can guarantee you, They want to raise taxes and limit your freedoms, whether it's from your First Amendment right or your Second Amendment right or your Fourth Amendment right or your Sixth Amendment right. 
their idea of the Constitution is not an originalist idea. It is a fundamental transformation idea whereby they believe that the Constitution needs to be changed and amended according to their desires, whims, and they will do so through force. The second emotion that creates dependency is fear. And that's why the Democrats need to call us Nazis. That's why the Democrats need to call us racist. That's why the Democrats need to call us misogynist, in order to create more fear in their base. So their base votes, of course you're going to vote against the Nazi, right? Of course you're going to vote against the racist. But that's all the Democrats have, is the politics of personal destruction. They don't have a platform that they can sell to, to the Rust Belt and, and many people in Idaho. But they can certainly manipulate and control the fearful. And so sometimes that works because it's an emotion. But I'll tell you what, the bigger emotion and the more motivating emotion is anger and and frustration. And that's how the Republicans took the midterms in 2010 and 2014, and we must do it again in 2018. Amen. Megan, I can't let you go without discussing uh, the fake Indian claims by Elizabeth Warren. Let me just say this before I turn it over to you. My wife is a substantial part of Cherokee blood. I'm, I'm very proud of who she is and what her ancestors were. But for Elizabeth Warren, with one one thousand twenty fourth part of supposedly Cherokee Indian blood, which is probably far less than Europeans that come out of Finland, how dare she disgrace her and the rest of the American voting public with her stupid claims? Well, she disgraced herself. I mean, she wants to run, and she thought that she had an ace up her sleeve uh, proving uh, that she had some sort of Cherokee lineage. In fact, uh, she basically shot herself uh, in the foot. Uh, w- what a fool. Uh, and, and, of course, anybody that tries to defend the fool is, is a fool themselves. Liars lie and fools believe. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, uh, I can claim, maybe she identifies, right? This is the whole, you know, liberal canard. Well, uh, you know, like Rachel Dolezal or whatever her last name mm-hmm. was out of uh, Washington. You know, she claimed that she was black. She has no, no black blood in her, but yet she was a Democrat activist. What, what are you talking about, you know? So the, the Democrats would rather align themselves with frauds like Elizabeth Warren at any cost in order to protect uh, their beliefs and their progressive communist socialist ideals. Um, you know, it, uh, the memes, and, and I gotta tell you, and I love our side when it comes to having humor and when it comes to controlling, like, the meme wars, the culture wars that occur on social media. I have seen more memes, you know, like a duck that, that's one one twenty fourth bald eagle. You know, <laughs> uh, you know this, this gives me hope. <laughs> Actually, use the left mistakes. Words. <laughs> oh. Elizabeth Warren proves that a Democrat will exploit the least fortunate amongst us in order to pr- propel themselves through the political power, or to propel themselves on the backs of others at a place like Harvard or Pen- or University of Pennsylvania, much like uh, Elizabeth Warren did. I have never giggled that hard in a long time. What was that statement again about the duck? I've got to write that one down. Well, you can go, well, I don't know if I have it on my Reagan Babe page on Facebook, but you can find it. There's a there's a white duck, <laughs> and under the duck it says 1-1024th <laughs> bald eagle. I love it. <laughs> We've got one call left before I have to go, but that one i got to remember. Call her real quick. I'm almost out of time, real fast. Okay, I just wanted to make a statement that has rang true since the beginning of time, and that that is hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. 
Well said. Love that. Well said. Sir, I appreciate your call. That comment was very worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to write that down. There you go. I'll send you the copy of the tape. And I'm gonna every time I see a duck, I'll pretend I'm seeing a bald eagle. Thank you very much. <laughs> Megan Barth, uh, one of my favorite guests, co-chair of Red Wave America PAC and the Media Quality Project. God bless you. Please come back soon. Anytime, Zeb. Be well. Uh, all right. You. Thank you. You too. Oh, my goodness. I love that statement about the duck. <laughs> He's 124th or 1 and 1024th bald eagle. <laughs> I love that. Time for the weather forecast. And the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. I know these people. They are really, really good. Great professionals providing accounting services to the Minicash area well over 50 years. The best of tax return preparation, tax planning, bookkeeping services, financial statement preparation, retirement planning, all of this and so much more by people that really can help you, your family, and your business. Business. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Looks like the sunshine and warmer temperatures are going to be sticking around for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch today. Another beautiful day in the valley, expecting sunny skies with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 5 miles an hour tonight. Nice and clear with a low of 32 tomorrow. Another beautiful day, sunny skies, expecting a high of 34 with an overnight low of 34. As we hit Friday, sunny skies and 64, slightly breezy. Winds out of the south at about 5 miles an hour, nice and clear for Friday night with a low of 34. By Saturday, sunny skies and 67, close to 70. By Sunday, sunny skies and 68 is what we're expecting. That's a look at your weather forecast. Uh, Gina, thank you. And brought to you by our friends. And they can help people starting a business or maybe trying to change into a partnership or a corporation. Or maybe you want to expand and hire more employees. Contact the people that know and can help you. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. As I said, with offices in Burley and Rupert, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Wow, we've got a lot of things going on here. Um, Let me see. I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Lennox with Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Service you can trust, along with Lennox products. And right now, Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering up to $1,600 in rebates on qualifying equipment purchases. So call them today and find out more. 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, over six decades of serving you. Uh, Yesterday, we had uh, Leiden Crane come on the program and talk about a private viewing that's going to be at the Burley Theater at 135 West Main in Burley on next, uh, let's see, the 24th is, i got to check my calendar, it'd be next Wednesday, the 24th at the Burley Theater. It's a film called Lavoy Dead Man Talking. It's a bio documentary on the life and death of, of Lavoy Finnicum, the Arizona rancher killed in Oregon on January 26th of 2016. I urge you to be there. I urge you to be a part of this. Very, very interesting and informative. And following the film, there will be a question and answer period with the producer and the family following the show. That's going to be at the Burley Theater next uh, week on October 24th at 6 p.m. PM. Don't miss that. I want to also remind you about our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Hello, folks that are dedicated and responsive to serving you. Absolutely, with the best of life insurance and health insurance and retirement planning and employee benefits, they really care. They really care. We were over there the other day, and they really take their concern to make sure everything is going right for you. Contact them today. Make an appointment, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. I've got time for a couple of calls. Give me a jingle on the landline, if you would please like to hear from you. 
So call 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Give us a jingle on the landline, and we'll discuss anything you want to talk about right now for the remainder of this hour. We have a birthday wish. I forgot to get out earlier this morning, and this is a very dear friend, and I love this family. We want to wish a very happy birthday to Wanda. Deceivers. Juan Deceivers in Kimberly. Her birthday is today. So happy birthday, Wanda. And I certainly hope you and Gerald have a wonderful day together and make him take you out to dinner. Nice lady. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. A quick reminder again that next week on Thursday, the 25th of October, we are going to be at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, for our monthly Zeb's Lunch Bunch. But it's a little special this time because we're going to have our Halloween costume contest. <laughs> And I I wonder what it's going to be like for the drivers going up and down Overland and people going into Denny's. And I know there's going to be some really weird costumes, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be there at 1130 next week on Thursday for our monthly Zeb's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. And some of the businesses that I contacted for prizes for the best costume, the best male costume, the best uh, lady costume, and the best mask that were very helpful. I want to thank Stoats Equipment Company, my dear friend Vic, and I want to thank Jeff over at Lee's Furniture, and I want to thank Randy at Tires West uh, giving a grease and oil and uh, filter, and I think at Lee's we've got a beautiful lamp we're going to get, and at Stoats Equipment Company, uh, just a really, really uh, nice prize. One of those great uh, Yeti mugs. If you've ever had one of those for coffee or cold drinks, they are phenomenal. And uh, we're going to get some great prizes, and we appreciate everything that they're doing. Stoats Equipment Company, Leeds Furniture, and Tires West. Now, next hour coming up will be the Idaho Fishing Game Report with Kelton Hatch. And uh, I urge you to stay tuned for that. That's coming up in the next hour, the 10 o'clock hour. And as I told you the other day, the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame is going to have their uh, kind of their party on Friday night at the Canyon Crest Event Center at 330 Canyon Crest Drive in Twin Falls. It's the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame reunion and tech distributing Coors party on Friday night. Then on Saturday night at the Canyon Crest, they're going to have the inductions, live entertainment, and all kinds of fun with a a tri-tip dinner and that's going to be at the canyon crest event center this friday and saturday night so a lot of fun there we're about ready to close it out for this hour but i want to remind you vote yes on proposition one Save Idaho horse racing and help our economy grow. Voting yes on Prop 1 will bring back and create hundreds of good-paying jobs and help the growth of Idaho's equine-related business. It's time now to return the horse industry to Idaho to be one of our leading agricultural businesses. Please don't be swayed by the misrepresentations and the false statements. Vote yes on Prop 1, November 6th, paid for by the the Committee to Save Idaho Horse Racing, Create Jobs, and Fund Idaho Public Schools. We're going to take that break right now for about seven minutes and be back with the Idaho Fish and Game Report. Don't go away. Zeb at the Ranch, we'll see you in seven minutes. Morning. Hour number three. I took a calming pill. Didn't do any good. Then Kelton walked in. Uh, but anyhow, welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch, where we are, of course, very thankful for our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a big fall tire sale. And some of our great advertisers, like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. 
We're going to have our dear friend on the air. Dear, I use the terminology. I'm just going to kind of put the hook out there. Our dear friend, Kelton Hatch. Hey, we've got a special feeder sale we want to talk about. Special feeder cattle, cattle sale that's going to be at Producers Livestock in Jerome this coming Saturday at high noon. Now, I want to urge you to remember this. This is a special feeder cattle sale, choice cattle only. There will not be any dairy or dairy cross cattle. This is a special choice feeder cattle sale. It's going to be at 12 noon at Producers Livestock. I urge you for consignments to call Dan Schiffler at 539-4933. I'll say it again, 539-4933, or call the office at Producers Livestock 324-4345. Special feeder cattle sale this Saturday. Choice cattle High noon at Producers Livestock. And uh, urge you, too, to remember our friends at Lennox with Ramsey Heating and Electric. And they're located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Don't forget, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Always trying to keep you comfortable and save you money. Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering up to $1,600 in rebates on qualifying equipment purchases. You call them today, 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, over 60 years of service to you. Well, uh, I kind of kidded him a little bit a moment ago because I asked him if the Gillette Razor Company had gone out of business, and here he is, world-renowned fishing game expert, Kelton Hatch. Howdy. (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't dare say anything i'm afraid you, you need an ambient or you need to take a do a little woo saw you know <laughs> are you done no i'm not because i've got to calm you down a little bit before we get going on this so so I, you know i can just see my bloody corpus corcus laying over here if you if we get off on the wrong uh, wrong angle here Zeb. if i'm gonna do away with you i'm not gonna do away with you in the studio because you're too darn big to drag out of here. Oh, well, see, that, that's what we need is a little more laughing, a little more smiling. <laughs> it's been a tough morning. I, I, I don't even want to bring it up. I don't, no, I, don't, I don't want you to rehash any of that. We want to think of pretty things. You know, like, uh, well, wait a minute. How am I going to do that when you're sitting straight across from me? You have to use your imagination. <laughs> It'd take a lot of that, plus a bottle of Jim Beam. Yeah, well... <laughs> Hi, Kelton. Uh, hey, hey, Zab. How you doing today? <laughs> Pretty good. Well, well good. Uh, we're good. almost thrown off the air, but that's okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> things are going well for you. But no, things are. Hey, things are hopping right now. Uh, why? Well, it's middle of the general deer season. Yeah, right. Well, now, what is open and what's not up here? Everything. Everything is open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've got uh, deer, elk, antelope, moose. Um, how many moose tags were up here this year? Well, you still have the one, but we've, we've harvested a few of those uh, super tags across see, the state, too. I see. And so, no, they're, they're it, still... Are there a lot of moose up there this year? Oh, there's always, you bet. Good population. Any kind of a population number or anything? You know, that's one of those things that is really, really tough to count. Uh, where deer and elk are really herd animals, and they typically... Uh, Running bigger herds than moose do, you know, of yeah. their one or two. Moose just, are kind of, they're, they're kind of all by themselves, aren't they? They're more of a loner. They get, yeah. they get they hang out together. Well, they're during, ugly. They, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, they get hanging out together during breeding season. Yeah. And then, and then they kind of head their own direction again. And so, um, and then in, in the winter months, you'll get a few of them together. But, you know, it's, we just kind of measure. That's one of the reasons we have the BGMR. It's a big game management uh, report that we yeah. do on each animal that's harvested. And so everybody that harvests a moose from the South Hills comes into the regional office, and we take biological samples. We take blood and DNA, and then we uh, measure the size of their antlers and things like that. And, you know, we don't measure many under 40 inches wow. that come out of that area. And wow. so that is telling us that since we don't measure any little ones, that they're, they all weren't born big. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot of them up there, a, a good solid population. We're not seeing an antler size decrease. And, so, and they're averaging about five males a year out of the South Hills. Wow. And so. Why in the last, let's say, six years... 
have they become more dominant in this area? They like it. Um, the, no, I mean, it's just, Why didn't they come in before this? You know... I, uh, who knows? I I I, I really you're don't the know. I, game well, expert, I'm, I'm guessing what's going on is you're seeing a larger population in our other regions, like over uh, east. Well, in eastern Idaho, and then we saw them slowly move into the sublet country, and they came into sublet, and then all of a sudden we started seeing them over in uh, 55 over north of Burley, and a population started growing. As that population started growing, they just keep spreading out and moving further and further into this un this area that is good habitat for them but they had either been extirpated by you know what did you just say <laughs> they'd been shot out <laughs> uh, i mean you're a graduate of utah state <laughs> the, yeah they had been uh hard by uh when we had pioneers first moving into the area i mean we used to have huge so they were here back in the, the you, you 1800s know, there, there's anecdotal evidence okay. that they okay. were you bet now he and, said anecdotal yeah this is going to be a long morning. <laughs> well, I'm trying, I'm trying to educate you. Okay. <laughs> but they were here, and then basically for some From reason... From everything, we, you know, they, whether... Well, it's like bighorn sheep yeah. used to be one of the predominant critters in this area. Yeah. And uh, now we just don't have very many of them. But you, you have changes in habitat and, and different things like that. But, you know, we, we've got a good, solid population down there. And uh, Do you go up there quite often? Quite a bit. Do you see moose up there quite it's often? It's not uncommon for me to go up there and in a given day see five or six moose. Oh, that many. Yeah. I it, think the most I've ever seen on given occasions is like maybe one, maybe two. The most I ever saw, see, viewed in one day was nine. Wow. And I had I spent a lot of day and a lot of windshield time, and it was just perfect conditions. It and was, you viewed them at a distance. Well, I did. They're an ugly, hateful animal. Well, especially during rut breed oh, yeah. and breeding season, and then when the cows have calves, they can become oh, aggressive, dangerous. And so, um, you know, you, and you get the right day um, when it's not too hot and not too cold, and they're out there moving around, and it's breeding season, and a person can bump into a few. But as when you say bump into, how close have you come? Oh well, up here most of them have been from the windshield of my truck, but um, when I've been just up patrolling. I see. Um, but no, I've had no. <laughs> we had one guy we uh, used to guide with over in Wyoming. We called him the Moose Boy because he got treed twice in the same season by moose. Really? Uh, bull moose coming down a trail was up at a high camp, and he was uh, hauling meat on uh, pack horses, and he met uh, the bull moose in the middle of the trail. And, not good. Not good. And the bull took after his horse, and uh -huh. he uh, went off the back, and the horses all came jo jo jogging back in, and we found him in a tree. And then uh, with Bull Moose standing there fairly close, we finally got him hazed off. And then we had. I bet you were a welcome sight to him. We were. And You're then, not here on this program, but I mean, to him, you were. A welcome and he sight. also he also got well, thanks Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> and he also got treed by a cow with calves uh, on another occasion on that same season, and so he never came back. What? <laughs> he decided he'd need to change cologne or something, but um, you know. It, you don't see a lot, but uh, I mean, of incidents with them, but a person just needs to be aware that not to push too close and get too close to them. Somebody the other day asked me, and I was supposed to ask you this question, and I know we're running out of our list here. I'm That's fine. We've got a short up. list today. But have there been or are you aware of any bears that used to be more dominant in this area? Uh, I was talking to a guy the other day that was reading stories of the Old West in this area and said that uh, when the UC Cattle Company was running all through this valley, there were reports of bears up in the South Hills. And we get occasional reports now. Um, a few years ago, there was a reported bear down there that was verified. And so, you know... <sighs> As a, as a harvestable population, no, but as an occasional critter that wanders through, you bet. Oh, and you're, and you're going to get those. I mean, we had one over in Sublet earlier this year. Really? Uh, over by Sublet Reservoir. And so, and um, we're starting to see a few more over in that Pocatello area. Are they, um, are they coming up from maybe the Wasatch area? No, not necessarily the Idaho-Wyoming border, because there's a good population over by Georgetown and Montpelier and, oh, and that see. country over there. Are and these over, black bears? Yeah, over by Idaho Falls and stuff. And, you know, um, and those populations c could, you know, there's not a, a, a huge berry 
production down in the South Hills, so I don't ever foresee a, a huge population of bear, but I mean, could it happen? Possibly. Okay. Eventually. I want to get into our list here in just a moment. I want to remind everybody that Legislative District 27 representative, and that's Fred Wood, saying please go vote on November 6th. Fred Wood, of course, has been a long-time representative serving us here in southern Idaho and a man that really knows what he's talking about. He is, of course, a lifetime member of the NRA and a retired physician and now a legislator that's working for all of us. And he urges you to study Propositions 1 and 2, and be sure and go vote on November 6th. Paid for by District 27 Representative Fred Wood. Also, quickly, I want to remind you about our friends with Syringa Plaza, offering affordable senior community living in Burley, Idaho. You know, this is a place for seniors who want to maintain an independent living status with or without assistance, and it's such a handy location, such a handy place for seniors with one-bedroom apartments, with carpeting and window coverings and kitchen, with electric range and refrigerators, please call them today, Syringa Plaza. Excellent place for senior living. And that number is 677-4204. And they're located at 626 Elba Avenue in Burley, Syringa Plaza. What about the hunting seasons and all the checking stations? You know, things have been going really well. It was kind of interesting this year. We... um I was just going through the numbers of of our check stations. I was going to give you some comparisons from last year. Zeb, we've got three, four check stations that we run up north for the general season because most of our hunts down south are controlled. And um, we last year on opening weekend we checked 1,500 hunters with 244 deer with just under a a little over 16% harvest success. This year, we were down a few hundred hunters. That we checked 1,374 hunters, but they had 367 deer for almost a 25% harvest success for opening weekend. Wow. We, we saw really good numbers of deer coming out, a lot of happy hunters. Everybody was seeing deer. Um, and so we had some, uh, some really good information that came out of those uh, check stations for us to be able to see what's going on. We had a high number of yearling bucks, too, uh, which is good because when you have yearling deer coming through the harvest, means we had a real good fawning success last year. They made it through the winter, and they're out on the mountain for hunters to hunt this year. Now, there's quite a few different variances to the season this year, isn't there? Like there has been in years past. I mean, I guess, open for this and then close for that. Yeah. And then where are we right now on the schedule for hunting? Everything you said is open currently. It, it right? is. You know, we've got elk hunters. I've been getting calls from uh, folks about seeing lots of elk hunters out. Um especially in the South Hills and up north. And, I mean, we, 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 we've got almost all our elk seasons going. We still have some um, pronghorn seasons going that will go into oh, November. Going yeah, on. pronghorn antelope. Oh. And then we'll also have deer that will go till the end of the month. That's and, one animal that I've seen quite a bit more of in the South Hills this year. Oh, really? The antelope. And so, yeah. yeah. And we've yeah. been, you know, we've been getting a lot of reports from uh, these ag fields and stuff around here that we're starting to get more and more and more into the valleys all the time. And so we've increased permits on those um, in a lot of areas. And we've got uh, several doe hunts. When we implement doe hunts, uh, it's to slow the population growth down. And so that's one thing you don't see us doing with moose right now. We've been debating putting a, a cow moose hunt in the South Hills. Um, we don't know that we have enough evidence to show that we're getting too many up there by any means, but um, when we start getting, and we've got uh, pretty good numbers of cow hunts going on right now for elk, uh, trying to slow their their growth down a little bit or m- at least maintain it so it doesn't overpopulate down there, and we've got very limited doe hunting in the South Hills. I see. Now, have we covered the first two items? You know, um, no, not really. The no. first item, yeah, we okay. we talked about the check stations. I guess I want to talk a little bit more about the check stations on one aspect. Oh, okay. If we're going along and you see a check station, whether you're hunting, fishing, 
bird hunting, you need to pull over and talk to us. I was going to ask you about that. Thank you for bringing that up, because what happens, a gentleman called uh, last week Monday, and he asked when you were going to be on, and he said, what do people do when they know that somebody has just buzzed right through a check station? Uh, we, we, uh, we have officers that will try, uh, go after them. If we can tell for sure that they're hunting, if we can see game animal hanging out of the back of the, the rig and things like this, we, we have officers on patrol. We also have other mandatory check stations where there's uh, where we'll put them on s- small roads in the mountains so everybody is stopped. I see. And, um, but, you know, the thing is, is we're not... Our check stations, the check stations I typically work are are uh, biological check stations. We're just trying to get biological data on the game animal. Talk to the hunter what they're seeing. Uh, take antler measurements. Get blood samples. Down south, we've been taking uh, CWD samples for chronic that wasting, that wasting yeah, disease. Chronic wasting yeah. disease that we've never found in Idaho. I want to make sure they uh, had a report on the news the other night about this, and our phone never quit ringing. We do not have it in the state of Idaho at this time. We are monitoring very closely. To, to Another thing that a lot of people have been talking about is uh, bovine tuberculosis. We don't have that in Idaho. That's a, in the Midwest right now. There's a couple places. We've never seen a case of it in Idaho. Um, if we do, I'll definitely come and tell you. But, um, you know... Uh, you know, if I mean, if you've got questions, feel free to give us a yeah, call. Yeah. But we do not have. Yesterday, we probably had thirty phone calls on it. Everybody thought they had because it's go, a thing going around on Facebook on oh, Brovar and uh, okay. tuberculosis, yeah. as well as a chronic wasting disease. The second thing is that hunter ed, hunter report. We've got a real time hunter ed. Rep, I mean, harvest report. So if you've killed a deer or if you're done hunting. Um, even if you're, even if you didn't harvest, go on and fill out your hunter report card online, and you can actually go to each of the units across the state and see how many deer have been harvested to this point. Keep talking. <laughs> He's over here killing flies. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so go online and get that done. Okay. This next uh, item we're going to talk about, it makes me mad every time we have some of these stories on the program. And you know, you and I both agree, I can't see any excuse for poaching. What what are you going to talk about here this morning? Well, we had over at Sublet uh, by the north off North Hagler Road at the Sublet Guards near the Sublet Guard Station. Um, we had a person in a white truck uh, that shot and left a doe mule deer over there. Just shot it. Shot it and left it. I, I don't know whether they thought it was a small buck. Um, you know, we have a limited doe hunt over there for a controlled doe hunt. Uh, there's no youth doe hunt over there uh, anymore. But, uh, you know, a few years ago when we had that youth doe hunt, we ended up giving about... 30 citations to adults that were shooting the kids deer for them and so which was really frustrating for us as an agency that uh i mean that's an opportunity for the youth to harvest their first animal but um this one was shot on friday october 12th at 12th around 2 p.m near the old sublet guard station off north agla road if anybody saw a, there was two people in the truck. It was a white pickup. They tore out of there. The the people that saw him take off did not uh, get license. Couldn't catch up to him. Get license plate numbers. But if they if anybody saw anything up in there or know who this could be, please give us a call. You can call the CAP hotline at one eight hundred six three two five nine nine nine. Or call us at the regional office at 324-4359. And um, you can remain anonymous. You can get a uh, reward from CAP. But this is a case that we're trying to put together. You know, we were talking here the other day. We had a little gathering at my house, and we started talking about hunting. If a mistake is made... Which happens Just all to, the yeah, time. Let me finish my point, and then I want you to address it. If a mistake is made, and they do happen all the time, aren't the people involved so much further ahead if they just say, we did this, we're sorry, how can we make amends? You bet. You bet. You, no, there's no doubt. I mean, we've had... 
um, I've con- I, I have had to confiscate th- uh, three deer this year so far. They were bucks that were shot with doe tags, little four-corn bucks. Um, we get people that they get excited, they see a herd, they, uh, they know they have a doe tag, it's a little buck, they shoot it. They field dress it, they call us, we go look at it. They reported it. They didn't mean to do it. They weren't trying to sneak this out. Yeah. So we do end up confiscating the deer, and that's their deer for the year, which stinks in some ways, but it was a mistake that yeah, they but made. it's a lot better than being arrested and prosecuted for poaching. You bet. If the, you try to sneak that un, out under the wood pile in the back of your truck, try to get away with it, or we've watched people try to break antlers off with rocks on the side of the hill when this happens, it's going to be a citation, and um, and so if you make a mistake, that's one thing I must admit, Zeb. You know, since we started this radio show, we've been doing this for a long time, but we are actually starting to see more people self-report, which is what we're trying to obtain. We're trying to get to that point. We're, we're not the enemy out there. We're just trying to ensure the future of Idaho's wildlife. Yeah, I mean, we're it, not sneaking around. And yeah. just because your name is Zeb Bell doesn't mean that we have a GPS tracker on the back of your. Well, maybe we do on yours. But um, <laughs> thank you for using my name after the morning I've had. Thank you. <laughs> but no, I mean th- that's not the way it goes. If we've got a per- people that are out there that are poaching all the time, yeah, we're we're going to watch them. Um, if we get lots and lots of reports because we're trying to protect Idaho's wildlife. But give us a call if there's an accident. I had a friend last year, a, a neighbor, a, an acquaintance. I shouldn't say friend, because, but he was out there, and he sh- shot a pronghorn buck. Yeah. The ball went through, killed a doe behind it. Oh. He filled dressed it, took care of it, put down two animals. But the thing is, is he called me, took care of the animal, it was an accident. We're going to work with you really closely. He was able yeah. to keep his buck. It was a, yeah. cl- a clean harvest. But if he had tried to sneak both of them out, it would have been a whole different thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just don't understand. Well, poaching, I guess he is a friend. Poaching in general, like you told me, I believe it was two years ago, about what happened up at Soda Springs, I think it was, with all those geese. With all the geese. or yeah. We have uh, deer that are shot down here on the Cherry Springs, Indian yeah. Springs Loop Road, and they shoot them and saw the antlers off and leave the rest of the meat. You bet. We're after those guys because they're... De- Destroying and wasting Idaho's wildlife. Absolutely. Don't forget the great big Halloween happenings at Four Paws Annual Halloween Party. It's going to be this coming Saturday, October 20th from 11 to 2 p.m. with you and your pets. Dress up your pets and all the different costumes. They're going to have a costume parade. Kelton's going to be there all dressed up. And it's going to start at 12 noon for all the pets and the families, prizes, great food, free pictures with your pet. This is a Halloween happening at Four Paws Annual Halloween Party this coming Saturday, October 20th, 11 to 2 at 370 West 200 South of Rupert. Number to call, 438-4444. We're going to be back with the great bearded one, Kelton Hatch, with the Idaho Fishing Game right after this break at the bottom of the hour. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much and welcome back into our last half hour. We'll have more with Kelton Hatch with the Idaho Fishing Game momentarily. Again, I want to remind you, Speaker of the House and District 27 State Representative Scott Bedke urges everybody to go vote no. November 6th. There's a lot of important issues this year with Prop 1 and Prop 2, and also a good vote for our dear friend Brad Little for governor. Scott Bedke, absolutely supportive of everything that goes on in the state of Idaho and helping you, your business, and your family. Speaker of the House since 2012, he wants you to go vote November 6th. Paid for by Scott Bedke, District 27 representative. Oh, with us in the studio, a very good friend of mine, at least I think he is. Uh, he might say something different on the street when he's away from the studio, and that's Kelton Hatch with the Idaho Fishing Game. How are you? Just grand. It's good grand? to see a smile. It's good to see a smile on your face, Zeb. Well, it's not a smile. It's just I'm laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, you. Uh, you. How long have you been doing this? A hundred and three years. A hundred and three. 
and enjoying every minute of it. And loving every minute. Now, I was trying to no. remember the other day. Somebody asked me, they said, how long has Kelton been doing Probably that program? Probably 13 years. 13 I was going 14. to say 13 or 14 years. I've been with the department 16. Yeah. Well, maybe even 15 years. It's been a long time. But it's been but, but, you know, I've seen you. I've seen you grow old. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no comment. Yeah. Pheasant season's about like ready young. to open, isn't it? It is Saturday. 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 Why so. did I think it didn't open till the thirty first? I, I have no idea. Senility's bliss. Yeah. I, 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 Duh. Yeah, no. Okay. No, no but, it it opens Saturday. How's the pheasant uh, you know, season look? It, it it you know I, I don't even want to get in the argument that it's not like it was. 30 years ago. And well, no, it's not well, nothing's close. like it was 30 no, years ago. It, and it's not. However, we have been having good reports on the number of birds that people are seeing. Now, I personally, you know this area right here. I do. And you know that ditch bank going uh-huh. up through the canal and everything. I have heard and seen pheasants almost every day for the last month. Well, that's good. I'll yeah. be here. Saturday morning. No, you won't. <laughs> no. no, and so I'll send. I'll put out. Go to our Facebook page, and I'll have Zeb's address on it. Don't no, you no, dare. No, no, and so, but we've been we've been seeing birds around. But the big thing I was going to talk about is our wildlife management area down at Niagara Springs. Um, we release pheasants down there. At Niagara Springs, you can buy a WMA permit for twenty three seventy five. Allows you to harvest six pheasants, two at a time, um, two a day, that you can go down there. It's kind of like a steelhead salmon card. Each time you harvest a bird, you just fill it out and say you'd harvest it on this date. And it, it gives you a place to go. How long is the pheasant season, by the way? It goes until the end of December. Oh, it does go that you? long. December, January. I think maybe the end of January. I'd have oh. to double check. Check your regulations. Because Easter night, wouldn't that be goes... going into another year though? If you went to January, wouldn't the season have to end in December? Well, you can buy another hunt license. Well, yeah, but in I, me myself, I get my hunting license the first day of December, oh. so that I put it with my last year's hunting license. So when I go New Year's to celebrate the New Year with a hunt. I've got my license. I see. You're really prepared. I try to be because I don't want to get fired. <laughs> oh, remember we weren't going to go <laughs> there. there. Yeah, <laughs> you did it. Yeah, okay. that's true. And so, uh, but um, so you can get that. But we have those WMA permits. So go down there and do a little bit of pheasant hunting. It's got different rules on it. You don't show up at six a.m. down there. No. You ha- it starts at ten the shooting. You have to wear hunter orange. Yeah. Um, at least a baseball cap size of hunter orange. You can't discharge your firearm near our buildings down there. But um, there's a <laughs> good heavens. Uh, so there there's a no shooting zone. But it's a fun place to work your dogs, take kids. There's also some uh, quail down there, and okay. so you can have a little bit of fun. Okay. I didn't mean to laugh. You just say sometimes some very frivolous things. Uh, non-resident tags are sold no, out. No, it, you, it, the, I'll put it this way. It sounds funny, but if you don't make things specific, things happen. I know. Duck and cover. <laughs> Duck and cover. No, it, it's amazing. But you know what? That's one of our biggest complaints when people allow people to hunt on their private property oh yeah one of our most popular signs is no shooting near buildings which should be obvious which is well there's a building here i shouldn't probably point my gun (laughs) that direction but people it's tough because people get excited sometimes and they don't they don't think yeah i know you know it's uh so just be be cautious out there we got to talk about the non-resident tags yeah every year um, this has been a kind of a controversial subject in some in some areas. Is we give out ten percent of our tags to non-residents. Uh, for a few years, we weren't selling out all our non-resident tags, so they opened those tags up because we try to set that number according to the number of critters we have on the hill. So we have the X amount of tags. If deer numbers are solved, this is how many deer tags we'll sell to residents and non-residents. Um, all the non-resident tags were already set aside. We determined that there was enough critters out there to sell that many tags. They weren't all selling out. So we opened that opportunity up to residents to buy some of them. 
um, I think it's going to get to the point that there's not a lot of tags left over the way tags are selling out as quick as they are now. Um, white tail tags, elk tags, and deer tags. Well, uh, two years ago, I think they we still had elk tags into uh, December, and this year they sold out the 1st of October. And so um, it, it's a good thing. It helps us to be able to manage, uh, run our department, um, and we'll have enough money to fly fly this year to count deer and elk and things like that. And so it's a good thing. But uh, just we've had a lot of calls, people wanting to buy their second tag because you could buy second tags as a non-resident tag if there were leftovers, but they're all gone. Okay, I need to break in and have a quick word about a dear friend of ours, and he's really been serving the state of Idaho as District 25 State Senator, and that's Jim Patrick, a great man, and he appreciates all the support he's gotten from you, his constituents, over the many years. A great farmer and, of course, legislator, Jim Patrick is encouraging everybody to get out and vote on November 6th. He said Proposition 1 and 2 are very important for the people in Idaho and he wants you and urges you to study up and be voting on November 6th. Paid for by Jim Patrick, District 25 Senator. Um, Let me see real quick here. I can take care of that in just a moment, so I'll take care of the next good word. Don't forget the starting gates are rusty. The stalls are empty. And the feed and tax store is closed. On November 6th, I urge you to vote yes on Proposition 1 to help bring back the great horse industry of Idaho. Prop 1 is not just a horse racing issue. It's an opportunity to support hundreds of related businesses and grow Idaho's economy. Vote yes on Prop 1, November 6th. Paid for by the Committee to Save Idaho Horse Racing, Create Jobs, and Fund Public Schools. Um... What about this, uh, simply put, Fish and Game gets a new hatchery? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, it, 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 what it is, it's a steelhead hatchery. Where's it at? It's down in Hagerman. Oh. It's next to our state hatchery. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service had been running this. They'd been raising steelhead um, for the Idaho Department of Fish and Game, basically. However, this year they turned control of the hatchery over to us. And so... Um, I think it'll be good for us to be able to own and manage this and able for us to be able to, you know, help our anglers and just to be more, uh, I don't know, it's just going to be good to be be able to have a little bit more control Do on this. Do a lot of people go down and visit the hatcheries? Hundreds. Do they really? Hundreds, you bet. Um, we actually take all our Trout in the Classroom kids, we take about 3,000 kids on tours of that a year just through TIC. I bet it's kind of an interesting experience. It is. It, it, it gives people kind of an idea on how, what it takes. I mean, it, it's nothing different than... Any other livestock operation, it really isn't. Yeah. Uh, because you've got people that are cleaning raceways, you've got people that are feeding fish, you've got people that are vaccinating or putting medication in, uh, in in the feed to be able to feed the fish. We don't give them shots, you know, but yeah. we we vaccinate them and then we'll run them through a squeeze chute and we'll clip their dorsal fins. Where do you get <laughs> all the fish feed? Fish feed. You know, they, they have... Is it processed it, it is. It is. It's, it's, it used uh, to be processed over in Buell, wasn't Buell, it? Buell, that's where yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. Well, here, I guess I'm yeah. saying the Magic Valley, yeah. so it's processed over there. And then a lot of times they'll be mixing, uh, it, when we get different diseases in the raceways, they just mix the, the medication in with the feed right there on the plant. And, really? Uh, and, and those guys work really hard. I mean, when you think about uh, dip netting, you know, 10 ton of rainbow trout in a day, oh you know, I mean, it's no different really? than shoveling grain. Yeah. And so, um, it, per, pretty hard-working folks that we have. How those and, big a fish do you keep them to be in the uh, hatchery before you turn them loose? You know, it just depends on uh, where they're going, because we, we we release some as fingerlings, we release others as 10 to 11 inches, and then we'll actually raise some to a little bit bigger than that. And so, you know, you get like three pound, three fish to the pound, two fish to the pound. So they're fairly solid fish, once, yeah. uh, but typically they, they're out of there before they're four fish, fish to a pound. 
What about these next? I tell you what, let's do a weather forecast, and then we'll come back and get okay. to the next category. Our weather brought to you this hour our by attitudes. Our, pardon me. These are our B attitudes. Oh, okay. Under. We'll talk about that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, don't forget, right now, our weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the entire crew over at three thirty one North Road, Jerome. The number to call three two four seven six five seven, or you can go to their website scarrowsmeats dot com. Absolutely delicious meats like the marinated pork ribs. Oh. They are delicious. The tri-tips, the prime ribs, along with the buckboard bacon and all the bratwurst. The list goes on, and it's all great and delicious. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Looks like the sunshine and warmer temperatures are going to be sticking around for the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch today. Another beautiful day in the valley. Expecting sunny skies with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 5 miles an hour tonight. Nice and clear with a low of 32. Tomorrow, another beautiful day. Sunny skies expecting a high of 34 with an overnight low of 34. As we hit Friday, sunny skies and 64. Slightly breezy. Winds out of the south at about 5 miles an hour. Nice and clear for Friday night with a low of 34. By Saturday, sunny skies and 67. Close to 70 by Sunday. Sunny skies and 68 is what we're expecting. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. Uh, thank you very much and appreciate it, Gina. The weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. That number again, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. By the way, to a very nice lady, a very knowledgeable lady, and a very helpful lady for the state of Idaho. And we're talking about Linda Wright Hartkin running for Idaho House of Representatives, seat 24B. This woman has really been uh, very, very experienced and educated on all the issues in Twin Falls County and the surrounding area. She's been a Twin Falls County clerk, College of Southern Idaho Foundation past president, and she wants to continue serving you in the Idaho House of Representatives, seat 24B. Don't forget to vote for Linda Wright Hartkin on November 6th, paid for by Elect Right Harkin Committee, Rich Stivers, Chairman. Back to you. There you are. Say well, something. <laughs> I was just going to say, we're going to talk this? about... Be safe and be prepared. Be kind. And be kind? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Always be humble and kind, you know. No, um, we just want to remind folks that when they're out hunting, great time of year to be out there. And I know it's like... I talk about this probably too much, but I mean, that's always a concern of mine is when we're out and we have different things happen uh, and we end up being called in and it's not a very good situation. We've got a gentleman that was, uh, that has been lost, uh, that they're, we get calls on people that haven't shown back up, you know, after a hunting trip. Yeah. So, yeah. and um, just, just always be prepared when you're headed out there. We're, Different types of weather this type of year. Where I mean, we're getting snow. I mean, we just got when you was going through the uh, Scarrow meat commercial, it got me hungry because I got thinking about when my son and I just got back out of the Middle Fork. We was in there for a week, oh. and we stopped by and we got a bunch of food from Scarrows before some of the you know uh, their teriyaki chicken. Oh, and, it's good. And their uh, peppered good. beef steaks oh. and stuff like stop, that. Stop, stop, I know. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, when we went in there. Um, I got a different truck, and so before I took off, I went and bought. I know it cost me a little bit of money, but I knew I wasn't going to go into that country without chains. Oh. Because I've got a 9,300-foot pass that I have to go over. If you get snow, you don't get it out of there. That's the type of thing I'm talking about. Even you just need to be prepared. You've got to have extra food. I mean, we come back with extra food because if you get snowed in, you break down, you kill an animal, you can't get back to the truck as soon as you should, you'd should. you like to. You need to have the stuff with you. If you break down or you hurt, roll your ankle and you're on the side of the mountain all night, you need to have stuff that you can... Spend the night and be okay. And exist. And exist. Right. And so you know, we've, we've talked about this, about, you know, a little knapsack. 
that you can wear that might have an extra jacket or GPS or yeah. a cell phone, even if it might not work, you know, they can ping into where you're at. Little things, matches, make sure you've got that fire starter. Don't rely on the old Boy Scout method. You bet. You know, little things like that. I never, and I'm not saying this just to sound good, but I never go up in the hills without being able or prepared to stay overnight. You bet. And, you know, and that's what we're talking about is just have the gear in your truck that you need. Have the gear with you when you leave the truck. Um, tell somebody where you're going and just be safe out there. And the other thing is, is we're just talking about people discharging firearms near buildings and stuff like that. One of the things that always concerns me is uh, people being downrange. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a firm believer. It's not a law that you have to wear hunter orange. But... I'm going to wear it. I wear hunter orange. Yeah. <laughs> Deer blind. I mean, they're colorblind. They yeah. pick up motion. They pick up brightness and things like that. Yeah. If you don't like fluorescent orange, get a camel fluorescent orange, you know, because it breaks the pattern up. However, 90% of people can see color. And so... They're more likely, if they're looking through their scope at a deer and they see a little orange patch behind it, they're going, oh, there might be a hunter back you there, not shoot. You better believe it. Absolutely. So. You know, one thing I was going to ask you about, now this is my own thinking, but tell me if I'm wrong. If you're, you're wrong. Okay, oh, thank no. you. <laughs> If you're up hunting or even on four-wheelers or even hiking, whatever the case might be, in land that you're not familiar with and you're not sure which way is east, which way is west or whatever, and you are lost, stay put. You Don't bet. start wandering. Do you agree with oh, that? Oh, I do, because you, you get people wandering, then uh, they get in a panic mode. I actually watched a person. I, I was really shocked. Uh, we was up, uh, was biking when I was in college, uh, pedal biking. And we're up in the hills, and they got really low on sugar, and they kind of, they call it bonking, where they just kind of... Yep. They don't have any energy. They're, they're really low on sugar. We were out of food, was out of water, and they took off in the wrong direction. And if we hadn't have been there, I think they would have been lost forever because yep. they just were not thinking straight. And we we're way back in this area and was able to get some sugar into them and, and kind of kind of bring them back. But, no, you, you've got to keep your head about yourself and uh, just hang out where you're at and somebody will eventually find Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I mean, when you start getting into a panic mode of running this way and then saying, oh, gee, that doesn't look familiar and running the other way, all you're doing is just creating a bigger problem. You are. The best thing to do is sit down, build a fire as a friend so you have somebody to visit with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, and, and wait. What about the big game season? You're going to be setting how it's going to be this next year. Is that right? You know, we're going to be the big game regulations and this year. And so what I wanted to do is we're going to be having meetings in uh, end of January, 1st of February. If there's some ideas or things you'd like to see change this year or for us to scope, please get a hold of us now. Uh, call Mike McDonald, Jake Powell, or, or Sierra. Uh, she's a brand-new biologist, and I cannot pronunciate her last name. Um, so I'm a good kid. Um, but uh, call them. Uh, give them your ideas. And... W- for this uh, coming next coming years on things you'd okay. like to see change, the last or call us here at the re- uh, call us here at the uh, radio station. All I right. can pass it on too. Okay. And uh, what about fishing? You've got that as the last title for today. You know, I always like throwing fishing in there because for not everybody hunts. Thank goodness. Yeah. And so if you're so if you're uh, if you're an angler, it's still open, right? It is, and this is the best time of year. I've got buddies that are hardcore anglers. They don't hunt at all. They can't wait for hunting season to get rid of all the the would-be fishermen you know that go hunting really yeah because then they've got the lakes to themselves water's cooling down fish are very aggressive right now uh we've had some very good fishing reports off magic yeah we checked some guys they go oh yeah the fishing is a little bit slow uh we only caught these two seven pounders and so it's like uh, you know wish yeah you know and so um but it's a little cool on the water but um, right now, but the angling is really good. Are those sturgeon still in Murtaugh Lake? You know, we get... I had a person say and claim that they saw you one. You bet. We, we get, they get in that system. That's one thing about the, the canal system and, and the stream system. I mean, we've got them in Milner Reservoir. They're going to get out through the dam. They're going to get into the canal system. Every year when we shut down the canals, we end up having stranded sturgeon in the rivers, and we end up 
uh, catching them and trying to put them back in the in the in the snake um, if we find them. But some of them do make their way down. The Are they going to drain the lake this year? You know, I don't know. That's oh. up to the canal company. And in that case, what would you do? You'd have to be there, if basically, can, if to get can, the... Yeah, if we can get in there and get them dipped and uh, yeah. caught before they die. How big are they? I don't know. Oh. I haven't seen them myself. Okay. I've just heard about them. Can you imagine the water skier that's here from out of state, and they take a headlong plunge and run headfirst into a sturgeon? sturgeon and go, <gasps> he's going to eat me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want to remind everybody about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, with a big, big, big fall tire sale. All the tires you you need for your car, your pickup, SUV, trailers, everything on sale. Don't miss out on these great buys. Stop in in any one of the seven locations today and make sure that you are driving on the best of tires for this fall tire sale at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers where they have also the best in brake service, front end alignments, shocks and struts, and batteries. Don't forget that. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wow, we made it through this list and I had my doubts. Well... I always have my doubts when I roll in. <laughs> no, no you're I'm really, joking. You're really jabbing today. I, I, well, I'm just trying to keep you light. I'm just trying to make you have a good afternoon today. I, I see. My idea of a good afternoon is to go outside, get some work done outside, get some work done on my tractor outside, and saddle my horse later on. I figured, you know, it, it seems like every time I drive by here, I see some some old guy leaning over his on his saddle horn, kind of there, the hat cocked back, talking to somebody. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I appreciate it. Uh, what about November? Are we going to see a lot of changes and things we're going to be talking about? You know, a, a few, because a lot of our main hunting seasons will be over. We can do a roundup and see how harvest has gone um we should have some snowpack by then hopefully maybe not too much maybe i'm yeah. kind of i'm fragile yeah <laughs> so you still have some hunting to do i do oh you bet uh, you bet no my son we we just got back from our hunting trip had a good time and he he uh he was kind enough to spot a deer and go dad it's just I would like a little bigger one this year. So I says, okay, bang. And then I had mine. And so <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork. Okay. And so uh, he we're still headed out with him this okay. next couple of weeks. And so get out and have some fun. Kelton Hatch I old fishing game. We make jest of each other, rightfully so. And it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. See you next month. You have a good day. Right now we're gonna say goodbye for today and we'll be back tomorrow morning at eight oh six and we'll be right here on K-Bar 1230 AM, streaming live all over the world on ZebBell.com. Have a great day, and remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be, and the world needs more cowboys. See you tomorrow morning.